Well, build my gallows and build them high Makes a long time climbing before I die I want the chance to spit in his eye Oh, well, they gave me balls, but I can see between To a dusty yard and long gone green They call that freedom, if you know what I mean And I drown my sorrows, but the whiskey's gone I'm sober as Jackie Hello everybody, welcome to Long Bangers Short Bangers, episode 6 I'm Matty, uh, tonight I'm joined Joined? I'm not joined, joined by anybody, I'm joined by uh, John Or Don, Don Johnson uh, John, how are you doing tonight? I'm alright, I'm not even sure what English is anymore after that intro Aye, I struggled there eh? uh, Luckily we're not on the timer yet uh, Right, aye, I'm no bad as well, thanks for not asking <laughs> You never gave me the opportunity, fuck it off I know, just take the piss out of me for not being able to speak But there we go mm. uh, Right, short bangers uh, For anybody who's not listened before Format is, we put 20 minutes on the clock Everybody sent us questions So um, if you like this and you want to participate, watch out for our Twitter and you can tweet us questions through the week and we'll get through as many as we can in the 20 minutes. Um, if it's really, really good, we might go past 20 minutes. Uh, we'll see how it goes. It's not strict, John. Eh? We're not at school. No. Well, I, I sometimes think that you're the schoolmaster in the way that you speak to me. But... And could that's how I dress up for the podcast, obviously. <laughs> we do need to put these on YouTube at some point. At some point. Because I think I think we've been looking good the last few weeks and no one's getting to see it. Nobody's had the benefit. No. Right, I'm going to put twenty I'm actually much on. much better looking than I sound. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> um, right, uh, twenty minutes on the clock, and I'll get the first question. So the timer's on, John. First question is: uh, If you had to be slapped across the face with a fish, which hips player, past or present, would you least like to do it? I'm going to I'm going to say Darren McGregor because he's an absolute unit and I don't think I've seen anyone that big play for Hibs. Uh, Funny enough, I was the, the one I, I thought it was Mixu for much the same reason. I reckon Mixu would absolutely hammer you with a fish if he had it in his hands. Aye. Who do you think would win in a fish slapping contest between Mixu and McGregor? Uh, McGregor. 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 He's, got, he's got the YLT advantage. <laughs> It's a funny story about getting hit with fish, right? See where I was, uh, right, I'll not go too long on this because we're on the clock. Fourth year at school, third or fourth year, we went on a history trip, right, to Belgium and France. So we're in Ypres and they've got uh, this memorial evening uh, happening uh, for for people who had died in the war and there's all these folk wearing hats, you know, with flowers on and stuff like that. So a big, big deal. And after it, we were walking sort of around the streets and a local laddie came out of his house and flung a fish at us. <laughs> like a big full-size fish. Uh, that was random. Eh? Aye. I've, I've never liked Belgians uh, since then. Apart from, like, you know, you can forgive them because it's Stella, but uh, other than that, I've not really got a very good uh, thought for the Belgians. Anyway, right, that was my, my fish story. Next question. because sure we wanted to we, but our international relations. <laughs> uh, right, Straight Red asked, why are Rangers fans so angry at a young man? Uh, 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 what? Sorry? At a young man. Why are Rangers fans so angry at a young man? It's because he has them on strings. Go on yourself, Porto. <laughs> I don't think I've got a better answer than that. Ah, there you go. Right, Pride of Edinburgh. No one likes us. We don't care. Is that the stupidest thing you have ever heard a Rangers fan say? Uh, sadly not there was uh, a boy that I used to be acquainted with when I was younger who's a Rangers fan and when I'd slapped the gums on a a woman that he was quite keen on <clears throat> he got in touch with me on MSN Messenger to say to me you shouldn't have done that I can where you stay I was like Brian I know where you stay I know what you say <laughs> <laughs> you're the postman <laughs> that's your job <laughs> uh, I think probably Andy Halliday tops it with his I've got this. Oh, aye, aye. So that was a mere stupid thing to say. Uh, right, Alex asked, custard creams or chocolate bourbons? Custard creams. Oh, they are just an unbelievable a texture sensation when you dunk it in a cup of tea. Like you can When you, you eat one and then you get in, you get dunking dunk it in a cup of tea with the other one and it's just, oh my God, it's, it's unbelievable. 
I love it. I don't, I don't like custard creams or chocolate bourbons all the way there. You're wrong. Excuse me. Right, uh, WTC <laughs> 1981. Uh, he's getting a lot of attention after last weekend, so here's a question inspired by Captain Slip Up. What's your favourite cheese? My favourite cheese is... It's one of those weird ones that's got um, a bit of, I want to say a bit of apricot or a bit of cranberry in it. It's the stuff that comes out. You only ever see it or you only ever see or eat it at Christmas. I said, showing the class of the podcast, right? Yeah, again, do you know the name? Uh, comes from, I don't, no idea. Oh, Long Bangers, the podcast on you've been on it for fucking ages. How do you know, Ken, that? <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, I will say Brie. Brie's my favourite cheese. I could eat that all day. Um, right, Liam Gormley, what, who's the best player you've seen play in Scotland that wasn't with Hibs or the old firm? That's a really good question, eh? I got ripped for this, for a similar question once before. I went for a boy with, uh, that played for Ghana Easter Road. It was a, your mate Colin said that it was a, a hipster answer. Aye. So I'm going to say Ross Chisholm. <laughs> he was with Hibs. Oh, shit, so he was. Uh, <laughs> Fuck, fuck. Uh, Matty, jump in any time you want. I'm struggling. Uh, I was, you know, Messi. Messi was the best player. Played in Scotland for the friendly uh, against Hibs. I think he'll struggle to top that, to be honest. I won't. I won't. <clears throat> I won't try. Right. Uh, I think uh, beyond that, Ravenelli played there for Dundee. He was pretty pretty decent. You forget about that, don't you? Like, what about uh, Kenija as well? Aye, they're the total <laughs> mental wee spell. I think they sent Craig Burley as well randomly, and then, then they just went bust. I don't even know Aye. if he kicked off of them. Um, right, next question. Does uh, This is from Bold Gordo. Does Morelos pay full or half price for his haircut? I think the irony of that haircut is that he probably goes somewhere really, really swanky, and he pays about 200 quid a fortnight for it. Aye. Do you think when the, the barber, you know, when they show the, the mirror in the back, do you know, they'll, they'll, they'll show halfway? Do you think, oh, yeah, bro, bro, that's grand. Do you go, think they maybe just spin him round in his chair and hold the mirror <laughs> in the same place? <laughs> Aye, that's it. I think the whole thing's done. He comes out thinking, that was quick. <laughs> uh, right, 150k on Hamlin Hill. Uh, see when you doze off on the bus and you fall forward and wake up, is that because we hail from monkeys and they don't fall out of trees while sleeping? I've never seen a monkey on the 35 to the airport. Uh, neither about. See when you're on a bus right, as a teenager, did you ever have any uh, unwanted bodily things happening? Famously, are you, are you asking me have I had an erection on the bus? Did you get a stoner? Honestly, times I still get them. <laughs> See if you wake up on a bus, that's got to be double trouble, isn't it? <laughs> well, if you wake up with a stoner, oh, you wake like how often do you wake up in the morning with one? So you wake up on a bus, that's double. <laughs> aye, aye. Do you see if you wake up as you're approaching your stop and you've got a throbber? Do you stay on the bus or do you get off where it's shown? Oh, good question. I'll, I'll try this out about it while I'm on the bus. Just if nobody's <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> uh, I don't know if they use buses, eh? No, no public transport. I uh, hate that you're on a cold day. <laughs> I hate that you're on a cold day. <laughs> she has called me. Um, <laughs> can't stand her. Right. Um, Raimondo Brown, assuming there are 365 days in a year, how many people could gather together in the same room, socially distanced, obviously, before the probability of two of them would share the same birthday is more likely than not? I've got an issue with this question because it says, assuming there are 365 days in a year. Uh huh. There are 365 days in a year, except for a leap year. So is Raimondo trying to trick us up, uh, trip us up? Or no, is there an actual answer? I, I I still put this out there. I want to get him on to answer his own questions. I think, I think, I think the answer is 20, or around about that figure, uh, 20. I answered 15, obviously, because 15 is your, your number. But, uh, why, I is think it, it's, why is it 20? Fucking, we think I'm Carol Vorderman, are you kidding? <laughs> um, I thought it was going to be some, something. I thought it was going to be something on the lines of 365 times 365 squared or something. I don't know. Before, uh, that, before you reach no, the I, of it. No idea of the maths of it. Um, oh, Joe, I forgot to... Um, Chris Lee uh, tweeted us a question and I was stuck with it for ages last night, but he gave me the answer. I can't even pretend I guessed it. Which senior UK football club is the only one to not contain 
any of the letters of the word macro. So you don't have to answer it just now, but by the end of the show, I'll give the answer. But if you think of it in between now and then, shout it out right when the timer's up, we'll get and come back to the answer. Right, I has a hammer asked who invented cheese and what made them think, fuck it, I'm going to eat that. It's got to be the French. Hey. Well, it bound to be an eye, or, or Mr. Cheddar. Obviously, Cheddar was the first cheese. Oh, what was so, the, if Have they not got a big guy doing it like Cheddar Gorge, like carved into the hill down in England it, somewhere? It, it was Cheddar George. That was Cheddar George. <laughs> Cheddar George. Cheddar it. George. Right, there's your answer. <laughs> right, Neil Whelan, if Arrigo Sachi was coming around to cook fresh gnocchi, oh, right, gnocchi uh, for you, gnocchi, gnocchi uh, for you, gnocchi, uh, <laughs> gnocchi, who's there? <laughs> and he goes <laughs> uh, Which two hips players would you invite for the pleasure? So who's having an hockey with you? Oh, so I can have two hips players with me. Um, I'm definitely Sozie because I think Sozie is going to be one guy that can that will appreciate it. Uh, I remember articles about him taking hips players out to to wine bars and showing them a bit of class and culture. Um, the other guy I think would maybe be. <sighs> Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Matt, I jump in. Uh, so, Matt, Matt I, I would go for, uh, for Sir David Gray and Anthony Stokes. Just because, uh, why not? you got a second Steven- one yet? Stevenson. Ah, oh, Aye, what a boy. Um, okay, Elite Tigers. How come it was safe for me to be part of a crowd of a thousand unmasked in Berlin tonight in a small stadium, but not safe for me to be one of 300 unmasked at Easter Road when I return? I don't think foreign policy is one of our strong points, Matthew, so ah. <laughs> I'm not German, really sure yeah. I can offer that a good answer. Put it, put it down to German efficiency. Ah. Uh, Gavin asked, if every Hibs manager in your time supporting them got into some kind of massive hand-to-hand combat free-for-all, who's walking out of the ring with a necklace made of teeth? Do you know, I had an answer for this earlier, but after that emphasis on teeth there, I don't know whether it's the right one, given that my thoughts were Neil Lennon. <laughs> <laughs> He's a decent shout for it. I would have probably have picked Yogi. Well, I was thinking originally um, the guy that probably had the staying power for that battle of about fucking 17,000 managers, it feels like, um, certainly since I was born, because I think the first manager I remember being in charge of Hibs was Alec Miller. I see. Um, and God knows how many we've had since then, but I thought the guy like Mr Fitness, John Collins, I thought he, he, he'd last the distance. But has he got the necessary mean streak? And I think Neil Lennon has that mean streak. Ah, uh, well, when Yogi started, uh, when he took over the Hibs, I met him in the club shop. He was in doing like a signing thing or something, so I'd gone down. And uh, I shook his hand. And honestly, his hand was about four times the size of mine. It was absolute shovels. I was like, I reckon he would just pummel everybody. I mean, if he clenches a fist, he's just taking the prisoners. So that's who I'm going for, Yogi. I think we need to get pictures of your tiny hands. <clears throat> Tiny Three. hands, like <laughs> Pringles with fingers. <laughs> uh, right, <laughs> Neil Renton asked, uh, you're in the old BHS on Princess Street. You're going to get a fry up, it's payday, but you've been docked money for all those sickies, swines. All you can afford is one of their five-piece fry ups. What five pieces are you going for? Uh, black pudding, tatty scone, cr- scrambled eggs, beans, and a slice of bacon. Ah, decent. Bacon, sausage, fried egg. Tatty's gone. Black pudding. Decent. Now we're hungry. Need to get Neil to give us his five. Aye. That's Neil, when you listen to this, send us your uh, your five items. Uh, Kaiser Soze, Rangers and Hearts have released sex tapes. Name them. Oh, I was meant to think about this. Uh, now, you'll need to correct me on the date, but Rangers, it's going to have to be something like Valentine's Day surprise. Oh, aye, aye. Uh, Valentine's Day should feature heavily in it. Uh, Valentine's Day with King Billy. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Hearts. Uh, What about going down easy? Aye, aye. Goes down too easy. Um, Right, Danny O'Neill. Was was a young mascot ever rude to Slippy while waiting to go out for a match? And was it called Ryan? Ooh. That's a plot twist, isn't it? Well, there was a young uh, young mascot that was uh, nipping to Gerard famously on TV, but it definitely wasn't a uh, Earl Ryan anyway. Hmm. Uh, right, moving on. Mike uh, asked, never mind cheese, who the fuck decided after watching a Henley an egg that they'd eat it? 
the French. <clears throat> All these things happened in necessity, though, didn't it? Like, you know, like back in the day when they were like, you know, you didn't have Tesco that you could just nip along to get something to eat. Folk had to just try things. Right? They had to experiment. Just fucking uh, full that's tilt. How it it? Let's have a go. Let's see if that kills me or not. <laughs> Aye, that's it. So, I've loved, like, honestly, who thought it wonder- who's who's boiling it though? Oh, I don't know. Like, I'd imagine. I wonder if that is maybe something accidental. Like, uh, you know how they discovered the microwave? There was a boy walked past some sort of equipment in the lab and he had a bar of chocolate in his pocket, and it melted the bar of chocolate. So I wonder if someone has accidentally boiled an egg way back whenever eggs were first introduced. With a kettle in their pocket. Aye, aye. Time travelling kettle. <laughs> Time travelling kettle. Uh, right. Um, Mikey Bree, if you had to give up alcohol or hunt tears for the rest of your life, what would it be? Hunt tears. And I'm saying that because I think it was two weeks ago I woke up after a, I'd, I'd been at the pub the night before and I woke up in the morning and after a couple of hours of feeling a wee bit sketchy, I thought I could definitely go another whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> like proper alky behaviour. Uh, well, I didn't drink that much anyway, so uh, I'd give up hand tears as well, except for alcohol. Right. Um, Mike, would you rather get a paper cut between your fingers each time you touched paper or would you rather bite your tongue each time you chewed? Oh, that's... Have you ever been asked the mermaid question? The one about whether you'd rather have like the upper or bottom oh, half of a mermaid? <laughs> no, I've never been asked it, but uh, uh, I watched, there was a thing with Ricky Gervais and he was talking about that, having that discussion with, with um, like one of the producers or something in the office who uh, wanted it the other way around, the fish head with the, the, like the female legs. And Aye. he was like uh, incredulous at it. I mean, from a practical point of view, that's Probably the most efficient way, but because if you think whatever it's placed, right? Aye. <laughs> but are no, you talking it's... about efficient sex where a half woman, half fish? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, just um, so made a bit the practicalities of it, right? I, if, I the, want... if, the, if the bottom half is a fish, right? How are you doing it? I don't know. <laughs> so. And I don't know if that's where the guy was going with his thinking. I'm I'm going to say paper cuts between my fingers. <laughs> Aye, I, I, I'm prone to mouth ulcers. Eh? So if I bit my tongue every time I chewed, I would just be oh. in a world of pain all the time. So that's because uh, you're massive. Because you're massive speed habit, mate. Uh, and and herpes. Um, Hi, <laughs> <laughs> I, I get a bit of tired. Eh? It's a weird thing. Right. Uh, herpes. Uh, <laughs> two questions to go. We're all right. We've got two minutes. Uh, left John, so we've done all right here. Um, Marisco uh, asked, What is the most bizarre trackside advertising you have seen? There used to be one for a funeral director at Easter Road. How many punters are off to arrange a, a funeral after the football? So, what's the most bizarre trackside advertising you've seen? I can't, I honestly can't say that I spend that much time at Easter Road looking at the, the advertising boards. I've got Wait. a weird. What's that? What you have to say here is you pay attention to them all so the hips can sell them. Well, I noticed them all Aye. and they're really memorable. <laughs> I honestly couldn't tell you. I've got a vague recollection. You remember when they got the digital boards up at the side of the pitch for, I don't know whether it was BT Sport or Sky Sports or whatever, and I think Hibs had, who was it had the, the Russian, was it a Russian uh, online bookmaker or something? And it flashed up in Russian on the TV, and my mate goes to me, "What did that say?" I was like, "Well, it's probably the name of the bookmaker in Russian." <laughs> Is it a marathon bet in Russian? Maybe that, that might have been it. Aye, maybe they've got like some sort of Russian parent. Aye, it's them, or, them or Scott bet. <laughs> <laughs> I remember like, bizarre advertising. The one that sticks in my mind is looking, and it said uh, Charlie Irons coaches. And I thought, why are you fucking telling us that for a start? Right. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> what is he doing that for? They're even that creased to start yeah. off with, like, so that if you have to make them presentable. So, uh, Charlie, Charlie Ed's coach is, is, is my one for that uh, answer. Right. Uh, Hi, Alan asked uh, Wilma Flintstone or Betty Rubble? Wilma. And I, I'm, I've definitely thought about this before. 
And I think you the reason that, that I've always I've always gone for Walma is because I've got a thing about redheads. I've got a thing about older women. Um, but what's her name? Uh, Betty Rubble. She reminded me some. I think she reminded me somewhere at the Happy Days, and I just wasn't in her. But wasn't it the forms, was it? <laughs> that that's that's definitely who it was. <laughs> it's the leather jacket and the motorbike that put me off. I think the film, the thing that would put me off Wilma is like she just sets out to piss off Fred, did it? Like even in the, the the intro, she's locked him out. It's not that the boys come home for his work. She's locked him out. Doesn't answer the door or anything. He's had to rattle a dinosaur to <laughs> to get to open the door or something. So if he's, if he's rattling a dinosaur, what's he going to go <laughs> to Wilma for? <laughs> I was being hitting it. No, no, that <laughs> rattling. But there you go. Um, I I did actually given that one any any thought before at all, John. Unlike, uh, unlike you, you have you never questioned whether you would rattle Mar Simpson or no? That wasn't the question, though, was it? Aye, but there must be other cartoon characters like Jess. Everyone talks about Jessica Rabbit. That's where it started. That was the Aye. quintessential female cartoon character. Would you? Would you? Um, um, and <laughs> can't believe we're getting onto that. And, and Marge, John, would you? Aye. <clears throat> I, listen, I've done. I've definitely done worse. <laughs> oh, who has not he? Right. Uh, actually, we've got thirty seconds left on the clock. Can you believe it? So, the last question for the evening: Hibs uh, announced a partnership with Manscape today, <laughs> which is about below the waist grooming for gentlemen. Yep. So, John, are you a below the waist groomer? You, I, I recently groomed. But it had been a few months prior that I'd last groomed. Are yeah. you are you are you a groomer, Matthew? No, I'm not an especially hairy person. Really, obviously, there's body hair and that there. But if you if you saw me, there's like hairy arms and hairy legs. Well, there's a timer that's saved by the bell there. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, aye, so no, it's never really. I, I'm of a generation like if you were doing that, like kids are different now, like. Do you know they are shaved their chests and stuff like that's kind of no kids, but you know young men. And if you'd done that when I was it's like that age, your mates would have taken the piss at you. Like you would have got rinsed for it. So I think just like, a generation that just missed that. Well, I wonder. You'll you'll maybe have seen folk tweeting for time to time. I think jokingly to say like this is this is the the result of kids that weren't bullied at school, like bullying shit. Um, but you do wonder when you see guys. <clears throat> wondering about whether they're they're up to or at the football or whatever, um, whether it's the clothes that they're wearing or it's their their hairstyle or whatever, and you think, like I, I've got a general rule of thumb. Like if I'm going out shopping or that, if I buy that, if I wear that, if I turn up to the pub in that, are my mates going to rip the piss out of me? And if they are, if the answer is yes, even in the slightest, I'm not wearing, I'm not buying it, I'm not wearing it, no chance. And I can only assume therefore that boys and their mates don't take the piss at each other anymore. <laughs> Hi, it must, must be something about it, eh? Like, like it's a, it's a tragedy. Something needs to be done about it. But anyway, tragedy. we do have a poll on that going on uh, on our Twitter. So go and vote and uh, and let us know what your thoughts on that that particular topic topic are. Uh, anyway, John, uh, final question: of the Evening prediction for Sunday. I think you predicted a two-one win for Hibs on Tuesday. You changed your mind? No, Hibs are still going to win. Aye, I'm maybe, going maybe, maybe even three-one. Ooh, you won. Well, I watched Celtic the night or some of it and they were now looking good, so we could definitely get them. Go for the right. jugular. Aye, uh, thanks everybody for uh, for tuning in tonight. Thanks for the questions. Some absolute stoters there. Uh, keep them coming. The answer to the club who um, didn't have the letters of the word macro in their name, John, is... Do you know? Is it? Is it Swindon Town? It is Swindon Town. Well done. I, I can't claim it because I saw someone tweeting the answer to it ah, yesterday. Well, nobody would have known. Nah, um, no, I know. Too thanks, to, thanks to Chris Lee for that uh, that headache that he gave me last night trying to think it. Jimmy, you're going through the alphabet. We can, oh, fuck it, what team is it? And obviously, it's the one you miss out. Right, anyway, that's us done for the night. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Tell me now when I broke free I drank all the whiskey in Tennessee